right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Jennifer Catrulia, who is over in lovely Connecticut. How are you doing, Jennifer? I'm great today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and Jennifer's a partner at Citroen Cooperman. And what we're going to talk about today is technology considerations for companies that are going to stay virtual or, or pursue a hybrid model. So here's a real interesting thing, obviously, Jennifer, is when the pandemic first struck, obviously, there was a lot of companies who had to move virtual and scramble. We actually have been running a largely virtual organization strategically for many years, so we were one of the lucky ones. But now, I guess, as things start to uh, you know, get back to your semi, get back to normal. There are real strategic decisions that companies have to make. It doesn't make sense to come back in. It doesn't make sense to say virtual. It doesn't make sense to be hybrid and all of that. And if you decide that that's what you want to do, it's not just as simple as deciding that you actually have to build an infrastructure to support it, right? Absolutely. Yes. A lot of, lot of continued changes and challenges. Mm -hmm. So what are so what are some of those what are some of the things that companies should be thinking about if they are considering staying virtual or, or moving to a hybrid model permanently? I think the two big areas to focus on are, are social and the, the relationships at work um, and mm -hmm. also management. So uh, for, you know, over the last many months, first, it was obviously a kind of an emergency reaction people had. And, and now it's a longer term decision. How do you uh, make sure that the work that needs to be done is being tracked carefully, that's being tracked completion, and that the satisfaction with the work from, from clients or customers is also um, really part of the ongoing review process. So practice management software or company management software, project management, um, and delivery CRM um, is, is super important. On a social front, uh, many of us have gotten by with whether it's Zoom or, or WebEx or whatever you've been using for virtual meetings, um, but it'll also become more important to have things that drive that feeling of social connection. So motion video, if you're going to participate in meetings without being in the room, being able to see more of what's going on without the fixed screen. Um, also, if you have company people that are out in the field and you aren't um, more of the GoPro type of devices so that you can mm -hmm. work together and, and be in motion. Um, I think, again, we'll have to figure out how to have some people stationary and others moving. Yeah, no, absolutely. So there's a couple of things I just want to dive in on there. The first one is, you mentioned technology, but let's take it a step even back from that, because I think what, uh, what a lot of companies discovered uh, when, the, when the pandemic hit and when they were forced to go virtual is that they don't really have good processes. They don't have well-defined processes. Let's face it, when you're, in, when you're physically located together, you can offset a load of things by, oh, I'll just pop over to Jennifer and get this or whatever. Uh, when, you, when you start to operate or try to operate at scale and you operate across virtual environments, wherever, you have to get your processes right first. Absolutely, yes. So having procedure documentation and also workflow that follows a person through the day. So having not simply project management from a deadline standpoint, mm -hmm. but also at each step through the day, if it's a more tactical environment, walking people through the next step in the process and tracking that through to completion. And at a higher level, still having rules of the game for everyone to follow so you have consistency. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest thing. So any companies who are who are considering doing this long term or whatever, you have to take a step back and ask yourself, do I have the processes in place? Because before you start to use technology, uh, it, the processes need to be on point, because otherwise, what do you end up? I always, always say is, if you have a crappy process uh, and you use technology, you'll just have an automated crappy process. <laughs> that's very true. That's very true. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and and so then then when you go uh, and then when you you do your process moving into into the technology realm as you as you mentioned, there are a number of different technologies you need to consider, and you also need to consider how those technologies can can work together in a coherent workflow. So whether it's project management, you know, work whether that's in your CRM or working with your CRM, your accounting systems, your your communication, maybe if you're using Slack or something, how does all of that integrate for a seamless experience? 
Well, it's it's really important on the number of uh, with clients, we often do an assessment from start to finish, mm -hmm. making sure that um, we look at whether it's the accounting software driving numbers throughout the, the company so that management can make decisions. To your point, the communication software, whether it's Slack or Teams or whatever else companies are using. I think um, sometimes you can have somebody decide to go with one platform and, and you have it mixed throughout the company. But really from that initial contact management solution uh, through the financial reporting in the company, um, taking that step back and blueprinting, you know, what, what's going to run the entire company is important. And also planning for scale, as, as you've been mentioning, so that you don't get a few months down the road and get the success you've been hoping for and suddenly need to reinvent the wheel. Um, so looking a couple of years ahead is important. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And I think that's, uh, and I think, again, uh, the traditional, uh, you know, when everybody was t traditionally together physically and stuff, you know, you could you could use systems differently and disparately or whatever, but you can't now. So that is the idea of blueprinting, mapping it out, figuring out what are the what are the crossover points. That's all incredibly important. And then, as you said, the the social part of this, because I think uh, I think a lot of people were probably quite surprised how engaged and how you can develop actually really good working relationships with people in a virtual environment, probably much more than a lot of people thought. Uh, I would agree with that. I actually think in many companies, we've done a better job keeping in touch with clients and, and contacts and networking than we have with internal teams. My big concern is employee retention and culture going forward, because in a lot of cases, we figured out how to book our days with Zoom meetings or or other things to, again, engage and focus on sales. Um, but if leadership in the company and management isn't staying as engaged with team members, um, they can start to feel very disconnected from the company. And, and they've been through that for a while now. Yeah, no, absolutely. And one of the things that we discovered, because we've been doing it for a long time, and I discovered, and I'll be honest with you, um, I, I'm, I'm still waiting for somebody from one of my previous companies that, that I was running, whatever, to come back with me and go, you're like a reformed smoker. You know, you were totally, <laughs> you were totally against the idea of people working from home and everything. And I'll say, I'll hold up my hand and say, yeah, I was, absolutely. Yeah. But I am a con convert, and and it has amazed me how well you can build collegial relationships with other people in your company without ever having actually met them, and and to the point where you don't even you you can't even remember that you've never met them. I think it surprised a lot of people when we suddenly needed to go home. One of the because we provide outsourced services, you know, one of the things you always hear is, "Well, I, I need people in my office," and or we're not quite ready to go there. Well, people got ready very quickly when they were suddenly faced with having to do it. But I, I think that, um, you know when I was with a company where they wanted to have the always on video, my, one of my first reactions was, well, you're not, I don't want to be policed all day. Yeah. Um, but again, in terms of trying to find that balance between the on and off of video meeting, but not having the, um, just the water cooler kind of reaction, you know, interaction and more natural movement throughout the day. There's that balance of finding ways to connect that are relaxed and that are in, um, not focused meeting time so that you do have the relationships and kind of that off the cuff connection. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. You need some kind of communication software, whether it's a Slack or something else where you can just casually, uh, casually interact, interact with people. But I think one of the other things, Jennifer, I think this is another huge, huge gap is that people think about, OK, in the office or remote working. And they think, okay, so how do I take all the parameters and, and the, the considerations we had in the office and how do I just transpose them onto a remote working environment or a home environment, right? But it's a different environment and it has different variables and it has different things that come into play. So maybe one of the things, if you are going to be hybrid or, or continue to be virtual, is you have to rethink you know, the, the working day, the may, way of operating, maybe for some people who have you know, young children, or they live in a in an apartment with roommates, maybe, uh, maybe they have to have different hours, different flexibility, you just got to get a little more creative, but get ahead of these things. I think that's really important. And it's really important to be able to do it um, and actually have it work, meaning that there are those with with families and or to your point roommates or where you just decide you want to take the two hours in the middle of the day for fitness activities. Mm -hmm. And then you think you're going to push some of the hours into the evening, just just kind of monitoring whether that actually then happens or you find that fatigue takes over and you're you're needing to go to sleep, um, you know, making sure that whatever plan is going to actually work and also not being afraid to work with family members and 
find space that is conducive yeah. to ongoing work and and uh, still maintaining. I think everybody's gotten understanding about the animals in the background and kids and all of those things, but. Um, somehow now there will be with some in the office, I think a return to a balance between a professional mm -hmm. presentation and, and, um, the hoodies we've seen for, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for no, I, yeah. I, I know I agree. I mean, and I think obviously, you know, there was, there was, there was a place and a time for that, but I do agree with you, but I think a lot of it comes back to is having conversations. And I think that's a, again, that's where, uh, where I've seen people run into problems is so you know, as a manager or a leader of an or of a department or a CEO or whatever, is the first thing you have to do is have a conversation with that your employees about what are the expectations of working remotely, right? And figure those out in advance, right? Don't you know? So everybody knows what the expectations are. Then, then managers and employees should also have these one-on-one -on -one conversations and make sure they understand. And in those conversations, you could say, I could say, Jennifer. I have a couple of issues here that I really need to discuss with you, right? You know, um, for instance, like I only have one room that's really private for for meetings, say, you know, that I can hold meetings, but it's only a certain points of the day. Can I really do that? Is there a way that we can organize this so I can make sure that I do my best, but I, I still come across professional, all of that kind of stuff. But I think those cr conversations are critical and it's critical to be honest and open. Absolutely. I think that this pushes a lot of the pressure on leaders to be able to manage by results mm -hmm. rather than micromanaging the day, because there there are going to be so many situations that require um, people to be flexible. And so it's not going to be cookie cutter. Here's what your home space needs to look like. Here's what your hours need to look like. So whether it's purely um, results focused as far as review or also compensation, I think you're going to see a lot of people look at performance based compensation and ways again to look at at the at the end of the day are we getting what we need from each other and is this mm -hmm. this working yeah no i love that i love what you just said there about the also about looking at compensation and incentives and everything because at the end of the day yeah you incent the behaviors that you you want and if you and i think I'm, I'm, and i think to be honest for the people who really want to work at home and want to work virtually or most of the time there's a huge willingness there on behalf of employees to to be flexible because they see so many benefits of it you know no commuting you know spending money on gas and lunch all the, all the other things that come with it so i think they're going to be most most employees are going to be very very open to to coming to an agreement and then being and then being judged on results absolutely well and i think a lot of employees are going to realize that and in, in many do already that in some ways working from home costs more because now they're <laughs> incurring home whether it's internet sure. or, or food yeah. or other costs that they didn't have before but also a lot of companies as they reconfigure their rent structure and other things will make more or at least decrease their expenses and realizing that there's a win in that for everyone and adjusting for it is going to be really important. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And then, um, Jennifer, the, the people who say, OK, I want to operate this kind of a, a kind of a hybrid model. It sounds great, right? But it's like, what kind of a hybrid model? And is it a different hybrid models for different people or different groups or what? Because it sounds like a simple thing. Well, we'll have some people in the office and we'll have some people remote or we'll have some people in the office some of the time and remote other, other time. But again, as we said at the very beginning, I mean, this has to be thought out. It definitely has to be thought out uh, as, because I think a hybrid always in the office for some where that's preferred a return to the office or mm -hmm. working from home and continuing that those I think will be the two easiest approaches um, to get right still still factors to consider but the hybrid you know partial weeks i think is going to be most difficult what do you have in terms of equipment is someone carting their computer back and forth if they took all of that in one place or the other we've been maybe a little bit delayed as far as looking at security um is every to the extent everybody's using their own equipment mm -hmm. um that shuffling back and forth and realizing the amount of downtime that occurs before and after each of those moves um, I think that probably is is going to be the greatest challenge. I understand the log the logic of it, but security, equipment costs, a lot of things that that will need to be considered. Yeah, and I guess uh, and I guess the other thing, Jennifer, is going forward, whatever whatever uh, whatever setup you decide or or combination of setups you decide. I mean, going forward, you're going to have to take this into consideration when you're recruiting. Right. Yes, um, I think it, well, we're already seeing where where employers are using that as the number one decide where you want to work decide when you want to work uh, and I think so um, the 
the ad as far as recruiting is now choose we're focused on your results choose how you want to work mm -hmm. and how you want to deliver that's the same with paid time off and things like you know choose your own vacation all of those so giving all of this autonomy you you then need to find out whether the actual role um, delivers on those promises when you accept but it's it's certainly going to be a large part of the sales process yeah and i think also in recruitment i mean you're going to have to recruit for people who are disciplined and can self-manage because if you have somebody who's like not disciplined probably not a great candidate for for remote working um yeah and so i think that's going to quickly show up um and it's going to become a different set of questions that you ask during the interview mm -hmm. process and on in the the presentation you look for when you're doing a video interview suddenly becomes different than what you are focused on in some respects in a live interview so you have to think about even what you're looking for in those meetings yeah no uh, absolutely absolutely and uh, and as you've been working with um, with your clients are there any things that are the things anything that has come up that has surprised you or has everything been you know pretty much as you would have expected i think the biggest surprise uh has been clients now um becoming more it, it wasn't surprising that they got accepting of the remote work because uh, we those it sounds like you too. Mm -hmm. If you've been working yeah. remotely, you know, it can work and work well. Um, but I think the biggest surprise has been how many um, are are committed to figuring out a hybrid model and are hiring now nationally. Um, where mm -hmm. they were ba so bound, but the caution to that is, and this is beyond technology, but where t technology enables this, now you have rules in by state that haven't caught up as far as hiring and, and compliance and all of those things. So I think that hybrid model, again, is going to bring some new challenges, but, but I'm just really actually surprised also by the agility and resilience of, of the clients that we work with. Yeah, no, I mean, in a sense, the reason if you think about it for a lot of businesses, you know, commercial real estate has been um, very expensive and it's been hard to get in, especially in high demand areas. You know, that's obviously changed, uh, you know, travel, hotels, all of that stuff. It's it's a huge line item in most budgets, especially for for sales and, and, and other people. Uh, and I think when companies have sort of seen the the result of not having those massive line items so expensive, what that can do to their bottom line and whether a lot of those things were necessary in the first place. And I think, I think that's probably another thing, Jennifer, and, and you're probably coming across this now is that companies are going to be more discerning about, about how they spend their money. For instance, like uh, Jennifer, do you need to travel all the time to clients or can you do zoom? Are there particular ones that you need to travel to? Are there things that you need to go to, but other things you can do virtually? I think it's going, the bar is certainly going to be raised on that. I, I, I do think so. I actually think the larger companies have struggled with this more because so many of them are so locked up as far as um, permitted social media communications mm -hmm. and really sales teams that are robust and in terms of feet on the ground have been powerhouses for so long were forced into being quiet. Um, when everything went remote because they really couldn't have a voice anywhere um, that was permitted right. by their own compliance. So I do think, um, yes, that, that companies will rethink how they spend and then they need to make sure they haven't roadblocked themselves with, with all their compliance. Yeah, no, and that's an interesting, and I think that's a, that's a great point uh, there, but a great point to end on, actually, is that I don't think um, often people think about the compliance issues immediately. I mean, they think about, obviously, I mean, somebody in the organization probably does, but to everybody else, we're like, oh, we could do this and we could do that. But as you say, you could end up lock if you were in that kind of industry with heavy regulation and compliance, you could end up locking yourself out. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this has been great, Jennifer. Great information. Thank you so much. Um, all of Jennifer's information will be below this video, all the links so you can um, find out more. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Sure. Uh, well, again, a partner at Citrin Cooperman, I co-lead our outsourced accounting and advisory group. Uh, so we work with small and mid-sized companies who are, are growing rapidly and need that additional support. I also work as part of our national sales team. So all the things we've been talking about today are challenges I face. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Again, thank you so much, Jennifer. And thank you all for watching or listening. And I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.